applied. So in a quantitative review such as this, the first thing that you must do is acquire as much of the literature as can be found. Uh, you must inspect it to see if it is relevant to what you're doing. Uh, acquire those studies, inspect them carefully, uh, code the results of studies that examine what you're interested in, and synthesize those in the results. And that's what we did. Next slide. Now I've got kind of a, a funny looking slide here uh, because I want you to see uh, these students of mine, Lacey and Eric and Lauren. Uh, these are very uh, highly accomplished undergraduate students at University of Wisconsin Stout who assisted me on this project. And the reason I have uh, these kind of casual pictures of them here is when I presented this once before, I wanted to show them how easy it is for me to get their pictures off of Facebook. Uh, and I deliberately uh, omitted pictures of them that might have been a little bit more embarrassing or incriminating. Uh, but to show I'm a good sport, I also pulled a picture of myself off Facebook. That's me uh, rolling pasta in the upper left-hand corner. So this is the team of people who worked on this project. Next slide. So we conducted a literature, literature search. We found 2,000 study abstracts uh, that may be related to massage therapy and cortisol. Uh, we inspected all of those, and this resulted in a smaller set of 173 studies that uh, merited closer inspection. So we retrieved all 173 of those and then carefully examined them to see if they examined manual manipulation intended to promote health and wellness, this is our operational definition for massage therapy in this study, to see if they provided data on the effect of massage therapy and cortisol in human recipients, uh, to see if they used random assignment to massage therapy and one or more, one or more control conditions, and also to ensure that they report results that are not duplicated in any other study. Next slide. This process yielded 18 articles covering 19 studies that met those criteria. And all the data from these 18 articles and 19 studies were entered twice independently. Uh, I entered all of the studies myself, and the uh, studies were also divided approximately evenly among my three students uh, who worked independently for me. And when we were done with that process, we uh, compared our databases and found that they tended to be uh, very consistent with each other. Most data categories were uh, over 90% agreement. And in the few cases where there was disagreement, we checked those discrepancies. Uh, if there was an error, like a typo error, or somebody put uh, the information in the wrong column, we checked and fixed that. And in a few instances where it was a matter of judgment, for example, uh, one person thought that a certain methodology was massage and another person thought, nah, I don't think this is massage. Uh, we combined heads and talked it out and uh, made a decision. And once we were done with that process, we had our final database. Next slide. We inspected, uh, or rather we included three different massage therapy effects. Uh, the majority of massage therapy studies can be fit into this framework in one way or another. We could look at the single dose effect of a first session of massage. That is, if a study included a series of massage sessions but measured the immediate effects of the first session, we consider that to be a single dose first session. If a study only measured a single session, we also consider that to be a single dose first session. The other effect we measured was single dose last session. If there was a series of treatments administered and the data were available to look at the effect of the last session, we inspected that separately from first sessions because there may be an adaptive or learning process involved in benefiting from massage therapy such that the last session may differ from the first session. Finally, we also, when possible, looked at the multiple dose effect in studies that administered a series of massages. If there was a measurement that corresponded to the uh, entire treatment period, uh, we calculated those separately. And there's more detail on this in the final report, but I'll leave it at that for this presentation. Next slide. Well, uh, our, our uh, review included 704 individuals, 359 of whom were randomized to receive massage therapy. 
and treatment sessions, massage therapy sessions, and also the control sessions averaged 26 and a half minutes across the studies. Uh, the range was anywhere from 10 to 60 minutes. And again, there is specific detail on this uh, in the report itself, which I can make available to you incidentally. In fact, before I forget to mention it, uh, this study at the time I spoke of it in Seattle was in review at Journal of Body Work and Movement Therapies. It has since been accepted and so now is in press. And so I can send you uh, an in press version of the manuscript if you'd like to see it. Next slide. Okay, so this is a reminder uh, that we are looking at the between groups effects and what I'm about to show you. Uh, so uh, the graphics I'm about to show you are representing this difference in my hypothetical example here between the average control uh, measure and the average massage therapy measure after treatment has been performed. Next slide. Here graphically represented is the set of results for the single dose first session. Uh, the diamond shape represents the value for a specific study, and the whiskers coming off of that diamond represent the 95% confidence interval for the effect. And the numbers along the bottom are indicating the number of standard deviations that massage therapy differed from the control treatment. If the diamond is to the right of the red line indicating zero or no difference, that means that massage therapy did better or achieved a lower cortisol value than the control treatment in that particular study. And you'll see that on average the diamond is more often to the right than to the left, but you'll also see that the confidence intervals uh, in every case touch on or include zero, zero as a possible value. Uh, that's another way of saying that none of these studies by itself has a statistically significant effect on cortisol, despite what the uh, text of the studies often says. Now these can be averaged and that results in the uh, diamond and whisker shape at the bottom beneath the um, horizontal axis and this is the mean effect across all of these studies and you'll see that it is uh, about uh, the difference between massage and control conditions on average is about 15 hundredths of a standard deviation uh, and the 95 percent confidence interval indicates that this effect is not statistically significant so uh, no convincing evidence here that massage therapy has an effect on cortisol and even ne neglecting the aspect of statistical significance our best estimate of the absolute effect of massage therapy on cortisol relative to controls is that the effect is very, very small. Next slide. Here is the same graphic for the single dose last session effect, and uh, it's a very similar picture. Uh, in fact, the mean effect is essentially the same with a slightly wider confidence interval. Uh, so really nothing more to say here. Pretty much the same story as the last slide. Next slide. And here is the depiction of the multiple dose effect. This contains a larger number of studies you'll see, but again the graphic can be interpreted in the same way. And uh, not only can be interpreted in the same way, but the result is essentially the same. Uh, you'll see at the bottom uh, there uh, is the averaged effect, and the averaged effect is about 15 hundredths of a standard deviation and a very similar confidence interval. And I should mention here while I'm thinking of it that uh, we included results uh, that were calculated from cortisol measured in plasma, in saliva, and in urine and we go into more detail in the report, uh, as you would expect. Uh, next slide. So our conclusions are that there is scant evidence that massage therapy significantly reduces cortisol levels, uh, and that its average effect on cortisol is very small, and in most cases not statistically distinguishable from zero. Uh, we didn't present the separate results here for children, but in our report we separate out 
uh, the results for adults and children. We do this a little tentatively because it potentially, uh, or not potentially, it does inflate the type 1 error rate to uh, calculate extra effects that way, but we wanted to explore it. And the multiple dose effect of massage therapy on children did achieve statistical significance, uh, but it's based on a very small number of studies. Uh, from memory, I think it's based on three studies, and so it's very vulnerable to the file drawer effect. That is, if there's just one or two unpublished studies out there that are not significant, uh, that's all it would take is the appearance of one or two of those to drastically reduce that effect. So very tentatively, uh, we uh, conclude that maybe the effect on, of massage therapy on cortisol is different in children than in adults, but uh, that's just, a, just an exploratory idea. Uh, but most importantly, it's not logical that such small effects in a statistical sense could be the cause of the much larger effects that we know massage therapy has, especially on anxiety where the effects are quite large, but also on depression and some forms of pain uh, where the effects are quite robust. It's just not logical that small statistical effects uh, would cause large statistical effects. That just isn't the way things work. Uh, and so that is the uh, summary or, of our results on this. If you have any questions about this, by all means, get in touch with me. Uh, or, as I mentioned, uh, if you would like to see the entire in-press report uh, manuscript, I would be more than happy to send it to you. Thanks for your interest.